In this lecture about the ear, we're going to discuss the vestibular system. Now, the vestibular system is concerned with balance or equilibrium. Um, and again, it's going to be here in the inner ear. And this is a 3D printed kind of uh, representation of that those inner ear structures. Here's the cochlea over here. And then the ones we'll be talking about in this lecture are um, the, the the apparatus that that uh, is concerned with epi equilibrium or balance. So you have two types. Static equilibrium is your relationship to gravity. You're just sitting there and you know which way is up and you know which way is down. Um, dynamic equilibrium is when you turn really fast and you know which direction you're going. You know, you're going to the right or you're going to the left or you're going backwards or forwards. Um, that is dynamic in equilibrium. And it kind of makes sense when you think about motion. So these senses um, are part of, again, like I said, your, uh, your inner ear. Here's the cochlea and of course that's auditory. And then here are the, the structures that are going, we're gonna talk about. When it comes to dynamic equilibrium, we're talking about our semicircular canals, and we have three of them. And when it comes to um, static equilibrium, we're gonna be talking about the utricle and the saccule. So the, the utricle and sac saccule, say that three times fast, anyway, um, have what are called maculae or macula for senses. Macula is the sensory apparatus within the utricle and saccule that detect where you are in relationship to gravity. So they also have hair cells. Everything here in the middle ear or the inner ear has hair cells of some sort. They have, uh, the hair cells have stereocilia that uh, have different um, heights. So they're not all the same. They're um, kind of like angled. What happens is that here's a here's a diagram, an artist rendition of a macula in here. So what it is is a bunch of hair cell or hair cells that have this these um, cilia on the tops, and you can see from this um, this drawing that they're there's uh, some of them are short and some of them are long. All of those cilia stereocilia, microvilli, are embedded in this kind of a gooey layer that's called the um, autolithic membrane. And it's made up of glycoproteins. Um, so it's kind of like things that we've talked about, like the vitreous in the eye, um, but um, a little bit um, thicker. Um, and it connects all of these hair cells. So it's like um, if you had a hairbrush, with all those little bristles standing up, and then you put a layer of hair gel over the top of it, and it kind of dried. That would be in, in every time. Then every time you moved it, you'd move all of the different um, fibers of the hairbrush. Also embedded, though, in this otolithic membrane are these little bitty stones, otoliths, ear stones, and they're made out of calcium carbonate, and they give it a little bit of weight. And so whenever your head tilts, gravity pulls on those autoliths forward or backwards or sideways, and it pulls on those autoliths. And again, we're going to have hair cells bending. And when hair cells bend, they change their ionic concentrations and stuff. And then that is picked up then by a primary sensory neuron. And so here's another kind of cartoon that here's the otolith in the otolithic membrane, here are those stereocilia of graded different heights. And here I've drawn in a primary sensory neuron. And what happens when the otoliths are displaced by gravity, then the hair cells bend and this change, they, the change in signaling within the hair cell is picked up by a primary sensory neuron. And then this neuron actually lives in a structure called the vestibular ganglion. I failed to mention in the 
auditory lecture that the primary sensory neurons live in a structure called the spiral ganglion. I'm not going to test you on either one of these ganglia, uh, but just for your edification, auditory is the spiral ganglia, um, both the semicircular canals and the macula for both static and dynamic equilibrium, their primary sensory neurons live in the vestibular ganglion. That's just an FYI. And here's one more artist's kind of demonstration about normal hair cells, channels are closed, bent hair cells, channels open, ions pass back and forth, and that signal is picked up by a primary sensory neuron. For dynamic equilibrium, we've got the semicircular canals, and they can sense motion and change of motion in three different planes because they're all at right angles to one another. These are filled with fluid, again, um, kind of like the, the inner ear um, with the cochlea, you have fluid here, but instead of, of vibration, it's the movement of this fluid past the hair cells on something called an ampulla, or actually, I'm sorry, it's called a crista because it's um, narrower and pointier than um, the macula. And so they call them the crista ampullaris because it is the crista within the ampule, which is the wide part of the semicircular canals. And again, we've got glycoproteins that are um, put, um, connecting all of the hair cells, just like in the macula. And instead of autoliths or, you know, being weight, it's going to be fluid moving across that cupula. And so here we go. Here's a, a, an artist's rendition. Here's the hair cells down here embedded in the cupula, which is going to be that um, glycoprotein equivalent to the autolithic membrane but not. And then when you turn your head, the fluid in the, in these, in the semicircular canal moves and it bends the cilia. And depending on which direction your head is moving, there's going to be a combination of motion in these semicircular canals from on the left and the right. They're both going to move, but one will be inhibited, one will be activated, and that gets really complicated and we're not going to go there but the bottom line is your brain can interpret which one's being activated which one's being um, inhibited and will then tell your brain which way your head is going okay so just to review static equilibrium is the macula and it's within the utricle and saccule and it's hair cells embedded in a membrane that has autoliths. And when your head bends or when your head bends forward and gravity pulls on those autoliths, it bends the hair cells. And when the hair cells are bent, they signal the sensory neurons that are attached to them. With dynamic equilibrium, speed, changes of speed, again, it's hair cells that are embedded in another glycoprotein membrane. This one's called the cupula. And it just sits over the top of the hair cells. And when the, when the uh, fluid moves, it moves, the cupula moves, and it bends again, bends the hair cells, changes the ionic concentrations, which is sensed by that primary sensory neuron that takes that information back into your brain and tells you that your head is moving. And here is another artist's rendition. Here's the whole crista. Here's the cupula, and that's that glycoprotein membrane. Here are your hair cells, and this kind of demonstrates that when that um, when fluid flows across the cupula, it moves the cupula and kind of like an oar in the water and um, bends the hair cells. And here is a picture of one. I didn't have a good picture of an ampulla, but I did find a nice picture on Wiki uh, Wiki Commons of the cupula. So here's the crista ampullaris with its cupula on top and the um, fluid-filled chamber that's within um, the semicircular canals.
So what's the difference between static and dynamic equilibrium? What structure within the utricle and saccule contains the receptors for static equilibrium? What's an otolith or otolith? What structures within the semicircular canals contributes to or senses dynamic equilibrium? And what activates the crista within the semicircular canals? Once you understand those things, and you're, then you'll be ready for your quiz. Thanks a lot for your attention.